Okay, welcome back to the channel, and in this episode, we're just going to basically be going over what we're doing and how we're feeling in general, because this is the last 12 weeks. This is the last week of our 12-week cut, and we're just going to generally talk about our weight loss, our experience, and what we what we accomplished during this 12 weeks, and whether to be upset about it or to be happy with what we gained. So like for me personally, I'm happy with my results from this 12 weeks. I went from, uh, if you go off of the weight that I actually was when I came back from my vacation, I was around 239. So before I went on vacation, I was 231. And then I actually swelled up to 239 from all the carbohydrates and water and sodium and lack of movement. And then I went from that down to 235 within the first two weeks, stalled at 235. And then my weight started moving again. And then it continuously moves steady from there on out all the way down to 223. So I went from 239 to 223. But if you go off of the weight that I was before my vacation, I was 231. So however you want to chuck that up for weight loss, I don't really know how to say like if, oh, well, it was from 239 or 235 or 231. So I'm just going to say whatever I want to call my starting weight of, I'm just going to say I'm happy with where I ended up at 223. Now, I could have kept pushing really hard this week and probably got down to 221 or even 220, but with getting 2300, 2250 calories a day, I was having really lousy workouts. I was mentally drained, mentally fatigued, and I just didn't feel like being in the gym. And I don't like the feeling of not being in the gym. So, I went ahead and jumped the gun a week early and I went ahead and called it and said, you know, my goal was to get abs. Whether it was a visible four pack or six pack, that was my goal. I didn't accomplish that, but I do have a visible outline and the right lighting in the morning time. And then on certain times of day when I'm very physically active and working hard, you can see the outline of my six pack, especially the top four, more so than the bottom two. But you can't really see it on the videos. The videos don't pick it up. And especially in certain lightings, it doesn't pick it up. But they are there. So I'm going to count this 12 weeks as a massive win from where I was when I started till now. I'm not disappointed and not actually being able to get a visible six pack in all lighting and all conditions or a four pack because this puts me closer to my end goal, which is to be able to get ready to compete next year. Well, late next year, I'm gonna compete. So overall, I'm happy. Now, the ups and downs of this program, I experienced a lot of highs and a lot of lows and there's moments that like I it hit me real hard and I was tired and fatigued and exhausted and I didn't feel like continuing but I kept pushing forward and I kept going through with it. And I'm happy that now that it's over, I was able to continue to pushing through those moments. Now you can say, well, you quit a week early. Well, yes, but the thing is, the goal was to get my visible abs. And one more week is not going to make the difference of having them or not. So now I'm just going to go ahead and transition into maintaining my body fat while trying to put on muscle mass. So as the phrase goes, main gaining, I don't really care for that phrase. I don't know why I don't like it. It's a lot of people use it and it's a good phrase. It's just me personally. I, I don't know why I just don't, it's always been gaining or cutting or losing or bulking or, cut, you know, whatever. But anyway, so I'm going to try to maintain my body fat percentage, if not trying to lose more body fat. The goal honestly is to lose more body fat while putting on more muscle mass. If I can lose body fat while putting on muscle mass, great. If I can't lose body fat, but I can maintain what I'm at while I put on muscle mass, I'll be happy with that. So that's that's where I'm, I'm heading towards now. I'm going to finish working out this week. Next week, I'm going to cut everything in half and do 50% of my workload for my workout to deload, continue with the diet. And then the following week is whenever I'm going to start full swing after the week of Halloween. I'm going to go full force into it and stuff like that and start main gaining, which is actually technically bulking because I'm going to be trying to put size on I'm going to try to get as big as I can. So, <clears throat> but overall, it was a good experience and I'm glad I did it. And I'm glad I, I got the results that I did. Um, and on average, I was losing about a pound, roughly a week, a pound, some weeks, a pound and a half. But it averaged out to actually about 0.8 per week is what it came out to on average. Um, what about you? You're finishing the, the whole 12 weeks because you're not backing off. You're still going strong. Like, like how was like your experience, your weight loss? your total pounds per week, the average of, and then like uh, just overall how you feel now versus how you felt when you start just in general, just, just go over the whole thing.
Yeah, like, so, for me, uh, it's been a good experience. Like, uh, we talked about it a couple times before. Like, just with the cutting of the weight, because that was my main goal. Is like, I, I wanted to get down to a much lower weight than what I was at, for sure. And I've accomplished a good portion of that. There's still a lot that I need to continue losing and I'll get there eventually. But uh, as of right now, I've made some very good progress with it. So if well, at the end of this 12 weeks, uh, I'll be down between like 35 to 40 pounds or so from where I started. Because I started roughly around like 290, 295, somewhere in there. And I should, like, I'll be down probably about to 255 ish by the time everything's said and done uh saturday sunday this week so it's a a good a good cut in weight there's still like i said more that i want to lose uh diet wise still doing my meals the same as of right now but going in next week uh, i'll kind of i'll be doing the food but i probably won't be eating as many meals because i'm going to be cutting back on what I'm doing next week for the deload and then come the following week after that when we get back in the gym again on a regular kind of another 12 week schedule kind of thing I'll probably increase my food some as well like I was talking about yesterday to up my energy levels because like the the fatigue and exhaustion is, is really starting to get to me more and more as I'm going because of again like the large weight loss and lower calories and everything like that it's just kind of been eating at me a little bit more each week and it's it's catching up faster and faster now so uh with that said like i'll go next like the next 12 weeks like uh the goal for me would be to kind of get my calories up some i don't really want to be putting on a a lot of weight while doing it i just want to get my calories up to a decent amount to where I know that I can start kind of pulling back again and start cutting again without hopefully being as drastically low as I am now to kind of help keep the energy levels a bit higher. So that's, that's my, my goal at the moment. So your total amount that you lost was what? 35 pounds at this point. I mean, this week you'll probably end up losing a little bit more, but you're what? 35 pounds roughly from the start till now. Yeah, like 30, 35 to 40, somewhere around there. Once, uh, once like the end of the week rolls around, like I said, I'd probably be like in that range. So you've been averaging close to about three pounds a week. Uh, yeah, some some weeks a little more, some weeks less, but yeah. Well, if you do 35 divided by 12, it's 2.9. So it's it's right at three pounds a week. So if you lose more this weight this week, you'll actually be at, uh, pretty much three pounds per week is what you, what you'd be averaging and losing and stuff like that. And, mm-hmm. and I know right now your fatigue is high from all the training and all the dieting and everything else. But so feeling good right now really isn't where you're at. Cause I know exactly how you feel right now. The exhaustion, the fatigue and everything kicks in and builds so heavy. It's just like, I lost weight. I feel lighter, but I don't feel better. I feel worse. I feel exhausted. I feel worn out. I feel beat up. I'm just, I'm beaten down. But once you come out of this deficit and you level out, that's whenever you're going to start feeling great. Like for me right now, yesterday's workout was amazing tonight's workout was absolutely amazing i had a good time i was in the gym i reduced the cardio picked the calories up and tonight's workout man i was just i I just felt so good like my old self i had mental clarity i was excited to be in there i was focused on my workout i was giving everything i had and it just it was a good workout you know and Being on a cut, you got to go into it expecting to feel fatigued and tired and exhausted at some point. Not the whole time. If you come out the gate on a diet and within the first two weeks, you're feeling exhausted, fatigued, tired, worn out, and just run down, you're not going to make it much longer. The beginning of your diet needs to start off mild and then you need to make mild adjustments. Like I've said before, I started off at 3,850 calories for this And then I slowly brought my calories down to 2,300. And I did that over the course of 12 weeks. I slowly brought it down over 12 weeks. I didn't go from 
almost 4,000 calories to 2,000 calories. Like I, I would have crashed hard. So I let my body adjust and adapt. I lowered it about 200, 250, let it adjust, adapt, and lowered about 200, 250, let it adjust, adapt. If I felt like I was building up too much fatigue, I wouldn't lower it. I would go another week or two and then I would lower it. You have to slowly pull your calories back. And if you don't want to pull your calories back, you have to increase your cardio. You have to increase your output because doing cardio just makes a bigger deficit. So if you want to eat more food, because you're afraid of losing muscle mass and you want the energy to work out, but you don't want to eat less because you get too hungry from eating less, you have to create a deficit by either working out harder, longer, or doing more cardio. So by me, I went up to a 20-minute cardio session in the morning, two 10-minute walks, and then a 10-minute cardio session in the evening. So it's a total of 50 minutes of cardio a day broken up into four sessions with about an hour, hour and a half training in the evening. And then my calories went from right at 4,000 to 2,300. And towards the last three weeks of this, the not the last week, not last week, but the two weeks before that, I felt the fatigue setting in, the lack of desire, the mental clarity like this, the want and the desire to be in there. And just while I'm in there feeling tired and just beaten down, started to catch me. And then last week, whenever I went down to 2300, it was a hard wall and I just ran face first into it and it just, it, it got the best of me. Now that doesn't mean that like, oh, I felt so tired and worn out. I'm going to go on the exact opposite now and I'm going to gain all my, my body fat back and I'm going to, I'm just going to go off the rails. No, I'm still 100% dieting. I've picked up my calories to 2750 and I've backed off the cardio. I haven't cut the cardio out. I, I do 10 minutes in the morning and two 10 minute walks during the day. And then I don't do none after my workout. So I'm still doing 30 minutes of cardio a day and increasing my calories to 2750. So I'm going to hold this calorie count for a while, for a couple of weeks, see what my body does, then see where I level out. And if I level out and I'm not gaining weight or maybe even still losing weight, but I'm feeling good, I'll keep it where it's at until I stall out either by going down or going up. I'm hoping I still keep losing fat. If I can lose about half a pound a week, quarter pound a week, even even two ounces a week, I'll be happy with that because that's still putting me closer and closer to getting my abs, burning fat while having enough calories to have great workouts, which in turn builds more muscle mass. Can you build muscle mass on a deficit? Who knows? Who, 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 who knows? There's so much contradictory science out there. I'm not going to say yes, you can or no, you can't, but I'm going to try as hard as I can to put on as much muscle as I can while burning fat. Because you know, the old school guys in the 70s, they didn't restrict their calories to 1,500 and do three hours of cardio. They just worked out harder and longer in the gym. They did more sets and more reps, and they worked out even harder, and then they just reduced their calories and their carbohydrates. Is really what they did. They reduced their, ca- their carbohydrates and increased their output. Am I saying, should everybody do that? Am I saying, am I going to do that? No. Just an example or for instance, there's so many different roads to the same area. It just depends on how you want to get there, you know? Yeah. And for me, like... I think what helped me at the beginning too of uh, not really having the the large fatigue and stuff like that, even though I was starting out at a, a deficit was before going like and getting back into the gym and stuff like that. I was like my meals were basically like one or maybe two a day, but they were larger meals in general. So like I'd have like one or two large meals in the day and then go a long period of time without eating again. So I was swapping that to eating six, seven times a day kind of thing even though they were smaller meals but having to to get that schedule of eating more consistently like that helped me a lot just because I like I myself wasn't like I guess like used to eating so often so that made me feel full even though I was at a bit more of a a deficit than I was uh, doing my quote-unquote non-diet thing before so uh, I think that's what helped me kind of be able to drag it out as long as I did before really hitting more of a, a crash kind of thing. But I mean, overall, like I, I still feel good about my, like how I am and everything like that. It's just the only thing that sucks is like, I just get a bit more tired now. So like if I can get that issue fixed and solved, I'll, I'll just be doing a bit better overall. So yeah. yeah. Well, after this week, whenever you do decide what, well, when you start to deload, and then you decide to go on a, I'm air quoting here, a main gain or a bulk or a maintenance or whatever it is you're going to do. Don't 
increase your calories dramatically, you know that. Go up by about 200 calories. See what your calories are right now and, and look at what your protein is, look at what your carbs are, and then just adjust one or the other or both of them, you know, like, and honestly, by you cutting out the cardio, that's going to make you feel better too. And then that's going to take you out of such a big deficit. And then by simply increasing by 200 calories, either increase 50-50 or do one or the other and then assess how you feel at the end of the week. And if you still feel overwhelmingly exhausted and fatigued, increase it again, you know, increase one or the other, but instead of doing 200 calories, go by like 50 calories because you're not far off from where you need to be to feel like leveled out, especially reducing the calories because you don't want to gain any weight to be honest. Like for you at your size, like you shouldn't gain any weight. Like like the goal for you is not to gain weight. It would literally be to stay the exact same body weight you are and then to get your calories up enough to feel better, to start working out really hard, to pretty much like rest, recoup, regenerate, and then go for another 12 weeks of weight loss because you're not quite there yet. You still have a long way to go and you're going to gain water weight and you're going to gain inflammation from the water weight and sodium. So your body, from increasing carbohydrates, you're going to gain water retention in the muscles. What like glucose... Your muscle storages are going to fill up with glucose, so they're going to swell up, so you're going to gain weight from that. And then you're going to gain weight from getting more food because you're going to get more sodium through eating more food, which is going to cause your body to retain more water, which is going to cause your weight to go up again. But that is not body fat, right? That's just body mass. That's not body fat or muscle mass. That's just body weight. So water weight, if you want to call it that, you know, but that's easy to come off. You know, you could get that off in a week just by simply reducing your sodium intake and drinking a lot more water and you'll flush out the excess sodium or the water and then you'll dehydrate yourself. So that's easy to come down. So that's not nothing to stress about if you gain a few pounds, but like the goal shouldn't be to like put on any weight for you. The goal should be literally to maintain while you're getting your energy back and leveling out and then go again whenever you're ready for another 12 weeks of weight loss and stuff like that. Unless you wanna get stronger and you're trying to get bigger, but I mean, let's be honest, you've you've been pretty big for a while. So it'd probably be a good idea to kind of keep it on the let's lose some size. Yeah, no, I, I still plan on losing a good bit more weight. So that's that's my heading at the moment. Yeah, and my goal is still to lose weight. My, my goal is still to get abs. Don't get me wrong. I want to put on muscle mass and I want to get bigger. Like I, I really want to get bigger and I want to put on a lot more muscle mass because being six foot at 223 pounds, it's not a bad look. I mean, I don't think I look bad. But I could look bigger and I could look better and I could look more full. Like my back has a lot of improvements to be made. My chest, it's it's not great because my my uh, my torn pec, it's it's never going to be great, but I can make improvements on it. My arms, there's a lot of areas that I could bring up to look more full and filled out. And then I could reduce my body weight by losing more body fat. So overall, the goal is still to lose more body fat. It's never to put more body fat on. It's always to lose more body fat while putting on more muscle. And uh, I'm just going to take it slow these next five months and slowly increase my calories over the months and, and see what I can do and how much size I can put on. And hopefully by the end of March and the beginning of April, I can start looking for a competition to be like, okay, hey, September, I'm going to compete. So I need to start leaning out by May, you know, like May 1st, I could kind of take a little bit of downtime and then May 1st start training for whatever. And like I said yesterday, maybe look for a coach or something because it's a lot easier to shut your brain off and have someone else do the thinking for you so you don't have to overthink what you're eating and if you're doing it right or wrong. And that's where the credibility of a coach comes in because like that's accountability, but also it's a way of you to not second guess yourself if you're doing the doing it right or making the right or wrong decision. And then you put your faith in someone else's hands. And then the thing is, if, if they mess you up, well, you learn from their mess ups or they learn from their mistakes and then next time they get you dialed in correctly. So it's it's never like it's never going to be like, oh, I know how everybody bodies work because everyone's body works and operates a little bit different from each other. We're all generally the same, but we all have, you know, little nuances about ourselves that separate us from one another. But um, I think that's going to be it for me on this one. Is there anything else you want to add or uh, no, I'm good. So um, at the end of the week, I'm probably going to actually make a little video of like how I looked at the beginning and how I look now and pictures and same thing for you. I'm probably going to take some screenshots and stuff like that or whatever else and I put some photos up of before and after and try to get some like some shots of like, you know, doing movements, the same movements at the same angles so people can actually see the dramatic weight loss that you made over the last 12 weeks because I'm truly impressed with your progress. Like you made 
really, really, really great progress. And I'm going to put it up there and showcase a little bit more. So I think it's very motivating and I think it's very, uh, very encouraging for people to see that and stuff. So that's going to be it for me, man. Um, everyone that's still watching at this point, we appreciate you stopping by and checking us out and watching. If you guys want to leave a like, we'd appreciate that. If you've been watching regularly and you haven't subscribed, we'd appreciate it if you would subscribe. If you don't want to subscribe or like the video, then by all means, don't. It's as simple as that. Thank you for watching, and until next time. Yep. Catch you later.